Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a few previous videos we've shown off our DIY garden pond, or as we affectionately call it, the fish hole. Now an ongoing problem with the fish hole here is that the water level goes down a little bit over time. Now we have a little gauge set up so we can keep an eye on it, and it seems like on a normal day it loses between a quarter and an eighth of an inch of water. Now that's a combination of factors. There's evaporation, there's plants using the water, there's little animals coming and drinking water, and then there's little wild birds coming and bathing in it and splashing water out. Now normally it's not a huge problem, but if we're gone for any length of time, the water starts to drop down below some of our decorative plants, and it drops down below the lip of our fish dome. Now currently the fish dome is not even installed. It sits on top of this oil rig structure here, and even right now the water level is too low to put the dome in. We've also had ongoing issues with water leaking out around the edges of the pond, and especially around the edges of the swamp. I even spent a bunch of time this spring cleaning out the swamp, digging it out, patching it up, and we still lost a little bit of water. So I can't have my lock system closed right now, or the water level actually comes up a little too high, and it starts sneaking out of cracks around the edges. Now we have a variety of rain barrels around the property, but in the middle of summer when the evaporation is worst, they honestly can't keep up, and it doesn't rain enough to refill these. So we need some way to get fresh water into the pond. And the other problem with the rain barrels is they're scattered all around the house, so it's kind of a hassle to fill buckets over here on one corner, and haul them all the way around to the garden to top off the pond. That's what we've been doing for the last couple years, and honestly I'm getting tired of it. Not only is it a hassle, but it takes forever to fill the pond one or two buckets at a time this way. And yet another drawback of using buckets is that it stirs up all kinds of muck and sediment when I pour them in there. The fish actually love it because it stirs up bugs and things they can eat, but it does make the pond look a little dirtier. When we dug the pond, I put these riser pipes in. This one goes over to our duck pond, and this one goes over to the fish pond, and these are over here by the hose. The intent was to be able to pipe water over to the garden, over to the pond area, but I don't really want to use just straight tap water. It's got chlorine in it, it's got chloramine, it's got other water treatment stuff that is fine for humans, but isn't necessarily okay for fish and snails and things like that. Fortunately, we have just a few barrels hoarded back here. We pulled out a nice blue barrel, and I did look up the uh, material safety data sheet. This is mainly just hydrogen peroxide, and if we rinse it out, it should be just fine for the fish. Let's see, I think I have a bulkhead fitting hoarded in here somewhere. All right, there. I should have a faucet around here somewhere. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, looks brand new even. Actually, this isn't the ideal faucet for this application, because when I go to open it, it's just gonna unscrew itself. This kind would also work, but this one's kind of old and beat up, and actually has a hole in the threads here. I should have another drawer full of plumbing stuff, but it's behind all the satellite dishes. I really need to clean up in here. Well, we got lots of great junk in here, but None of it's quite what we want. So we might actually have to break down and go to something that's a last resort on this channel. The hardware store. These caps are nice because they're already threaded for a hose. You just have to drill a hole in the middle. So here's the approximate plan. We have a water barrel near the house that takes faucet water treats it or filters it in some way to make it safe for the fish, and then it gets dispensed out to the pond as needed. I haven't quite decided yet if I want to go with a chemical treatment to remove the chlorine and chloramine, or if I want to go with something like an activated carbon filter. And to make this easier, I'm thinking of doing it in several steps. So first off, I'll just set up the barrel, and I'll do it manually. I'll either add the treatment chemical, or we'll have a filter, We'll fill that barrel as needed, and then we'll empty it into the pond as needed. In step two, if I'm going with the chemical option, I'm going to have a, an auto-dosing dispenser. And then in step three, we're going to have a float switch and just automatically refill the pond. And then finally, for step four, which we may not get to in this video, I'd like to have some kind of a monitoring system and an automation controller. All right, I broke down and actually purchased some parts. I did make sure to get some extra stuff so we could hoard it for next time. And I even found this cool little flow meter at the hardware store, so we can actually track exactly how much water we're putting into that pond. Mm -hmm. 
So over at the pond, this riser pipe comes up from back by the faucet area. So this is where our water will come out. We need to chop it off a little lower and plumb it into the pond so the water goes that way. All right, we finally got the water level high enough and stable enough that we can install the pond dome. And the fish have just been waiting for this and they knew what this dome was. They say goldfish don't have very long memories, but as soon as I put it on the pedestal, they were underneath there waiting for it to be full of water. They love to come up in this thing and look around the yard and swim around. It's like their favorite part of the pond. We've been a little bit disorganized with filming and editing this video, but here is our current situation with the pond refilling system. So we have our blue barrel here, and as needed, we fill that blue barrel from the tap. When we fill it, we put in 10 milliliters of this AquaSafe pond treatment, and that treats 55 gallons. Now our barrel has the outlet a little bit above the bottom, so we're not actually getting 55 gallons into the pond each time. I left some extra water in the bottom just as weight to hold the barrel down. Once the barrel is full, as we need to add water to the pond, we open this valve here. That flows over to our riser pipe here, goes through the in-ground plumbing, and that comes out here underneath our bench, which has, which has the pond pump and whatnot in there. Flows through here, underneath all of our fossil rocks here, comes out inside this little area in the swamp filter pond and then all the extra water runs off through the lock and dam system into the main fish pond. We do still have a few problems to address. For one thing the neighborhood raccoons love to get in here and dig around in the pond. There's some plant pots and stuff that have been just torn out or pushed into the deep end and then uh, some of our poor snails have been pulled out and cracked open and eaten by the raccoons. So far, I don't think they've caught any of the fish. The pond is pretty deep in the middle, so the fish can get down there and hide about three feet deep. But the raccoons are just murder on the landscaping, and they love to push all of our plants into the deep end. Not really sure what to do about that. We keep our ducks and goose fenced out because they would also eat everything in the pond. They have their own little pond they can swim in over there. Well, so far, this system is working pretty well. I've got my instructions here for how to manually fill and empty the barrel and that's pretty workable. We could be doing that all summer. However, I'd still like to automate this to some extent. While our chemical treatment system seems to be working okay, I went ahead and ordered a really nice pond filter. Now there's some cheap ones on Amazon that are geared more towards RVing. They remove the taste, but not necessarily the actual chemicals. So this one is from MacArthur Water Gardens and it's their Pond Filter 100. It's actually designed specifically to remove harmful chemicals that would otherwise impact the fish or the plants or anything else in the pond. You can't just push water through this at a high rate. You have to actually have it at a specific flow rate so it doesn't overwhelm the activated carbon in there. Some of this will have to be voiceovers because the barrel is right next to the air conditioner and between the heat and all the smoke this summer, we've been running that air conditioner pretty much nonstop. So it's just gonna be noisy the whole time. Okay, the air conditioner finally shut off, so I can actually talk about this for a minute. Um, yeah, we've determined that this one, this float valve won't work. It fits in there just fine, but the float is set up kind of backwards, so um, when it floats up, it'll open the valve. I think it's supposed to be mounted this way, like maybe in a toilet or something, but I need to mount it this way, so this one won't work. This float valve doesn't fit in the one hole, but it does fit over here in this hole of the tank, so that's great, and I can plumb in the hose to the top here. So I could do the hose straight in and just do it as before, mixing in the AquaSafe and then uh, running the hose, it'll fill the tank automatically. But then if I forget to unhook everything and I've got water still going into the pond, we could eventually start throwing untreated water in there, which we don't want. So I'm trying to hook up the um, Aquascape filter here. It's got these confusing little fittings and these little tubey things and the cats have already trying to help me with this so I'm gonna have to cut off that end that's all chewed up. So I need a way to go from this hose 
into my float valve and yeah it's a very tiny hose but this actually has a reduced flow rate so we're only supposed to do like two liters a minute through this filter which I'm thinking is going to be very annoying to fill the barrel. Also adding all of these connectors and tubes and hoses and fittings is adding a lot of potential leak points so I'm not sure if this is uh, quite the right way to do this. I think we're just mostly adding a lot of potential failures. If we go away for a week and leave this all hooked up, we could come back and just have a massive water bill. Yeah, this thing is terrible. We're not using it. I'm doing the math here and limiting the flow rate to two liters a minute for a 50 gallon barrel, that's gonna take over an hour and a half to fill that barrel. Um, yeah, I don't like this. I think that's gonna take too long. It's not gonna be very usable. We might just give up on the filter, the float valves, and all the fancy stuff for now. We're going to stick with the purely manual tank where you just fill it, empty it into the pond, treat it, fill it. Um, that's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. It's fast. You can let it fill the pond unattended because it'll just stop running when the barrel's empty. And then you can refill the barrel whenever you want as long as you treat it. So we're going to wrap this video up. We're going to come back to the float valve and the filter and all the fancy stuff. Possibly along with some sensors, some flow rate stuff, some temperature stuff. Um, but that'll have to be a different video because again, it's already the middle of summer. We're already in the middle of a drought. We need something pretty foolproof that we can just use for the rest of this year. Speaking of temperatures, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to take one of my thermal cameras that I did a review on recently and aim that at the tank. So it's kind of cool to see how the tank heats up during the day. Then when we refill it from the city water, you can really see that temperature gradient of cold water coming through the hose, coming into the tank, and filling it up again. Again, we're putting in less than 50 gallons, and the pond is like 500 gallons. So far, we have not seen any negative effects from putting in slightly warmer or slightly colder water directly into the pond. Okay, so that's all we've got on the pond refill for now. You'll have to stay tuned to see our improvements to this system, but for now, we're going to leave it alone. We're going to move on to other stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.